Hey, I'm Prith Viraj. I'm a PhD student at Georgia Tech presenting graph constrained reinforcement learning for natural language action spaces. And this is work done with Matthew Hosnack at Microsoft Research. So this work is primarily concerned with goal-driven language generation in situated or grounded environments. Um, and the environment that we chose is text adventures or interactive fiction games. So these games let us explore some of the challenges at the intersection of reinforcement learning and natural language processing without the sort of human costly like interaction that's otherwise required. So, okay, what do these games actually look like? Um, they're a bit different from regular video games. So they're usually structured as puzzles or quests in which an agent interacts with the world purely through textual natural language. So the player receives a description of what they see, something like this. Um, you're standing in an open field west of a White House and you see a mailbox in front of you. Um, and then type in what they want to do given that description. So you might want to open the mailbox. And then with this action, you receive immediate feedback on what happens when you open the mailbox, so on and so forth. Okay, so the first major challenge to playing these kinds of games is that of knowledge representation. So players only receive potentially incomplete descriptions of the world around them. Um, and these games have many locations, objects, descriptions, so on and so forth that we need to keep track of. And another major uh, challenge is that of the combinatorial action space size. So for a game like Zork, we're operating with an action space of 98 million possible actions per step. Um, and the question here really becomes is how do you adapt current RL algorithms um, you know, they're usually either designed for small discrete spaces or continuous spaces to handle language generation in this sort of like combinatorially sized space. Okay, so building off previous work, um, you know, knowledge graphs are a very intuitive way of representing um, a text adventure game. Um, so they're easy to understand. They give us structured memory aids and people have already been using graphs as, you know, game guides for quite some time now. Um, so what you're looking at on the right here is a hand-drawn map of the world of Sork. So we've decided to adapt this representation because we believe it helps with both the challenges that we just talked about. So the actual graph representation looks something like what you see on the left here. So it's a set of subject relation object triples um, designed to give the agent a mental map of the world. So locations, objects, you know, their attributes, so on and so forth. So this paper has two core contributions. So the first extends previous work to show how knowledge graphs help with uh, knowledge representation by giving the agents persistent memory. Um, and the second contribution shows how we can use the knowledge graphs to constrain the combinatorially sized action space. Um, so enabling more efficient exploration. Okay, so now putting all these pieces together, uh, we introduced the KGA2C, which integrates the knowledge graph with A2C. It's a well-studied RO algorithm. Um, and it augments A2C in two ways. So the first is in terms of the state representation. So um, it gives the agent a better input state representation. And the first bit of this is um, the GRU encodings of the raw textual descriptions followed by the score. Um, and then the KG it's itself embedded using graph attention network or the GAT network um, to help the agent, you know, just focus on which parts of the graph it wants to see. So the state representation is then passed into an actor that sequentially decodes a template and then n objects for each template um, with a GRU based decoder. So this is what the action space looks like. So this is the set of templates and the kinds of objects that you usually see. Um, and so now going off the intuition that you never really interact with objects that you've never seen before, uh, we can mask out all the entities that you've never seen in a graph. Um, and once we've masked things out, so what it's predicting from actually looks something a little bit more like what you see here. Um, the space that we're generating from is now much smaller, and this helps the agent explore more effectively. So the resulting action that's executed in the simulator looks a bit more like this. Okay, so there's a lot of moving parts here. And so we tried some ablations to see, you know, what parts of things we did actually helped. Um, so this included removing uses of the knowledge graph in terms of the mask and the graph attention embeddings and so on. And the just little results is that having both the knowledge graph and the templates together in place lets the agent learn significantly faster. Um, and this shows its overall usefulness. Um, so on top of just Zork, we tested on 28 games in total. So everything from slice of life walking simulators to Lovecraftian horror games, you know, different language styles, structures, reward functions, so on and so forth. 
Um, and we find that the KGA2C outperforms current steady art on 23 out of 28 of these games. That's all. Thank you. You can find the code and can reach me at these locations.